this evening, um, and he will we, he will address any comments, any questions or comments that you have. So please put those in the chat, and we'll read them to him. So to, this evening, we're very excited to welcome in, to our uh, you to our conversation with award-winning Israeli filmmaker, producer, director, and screenwriter Donnie Menken. Donnie is one of Israel's top filmmakers and is a two-time Israeli award winner, uh, Academy Award winner, the Ophir Award. His award-winning narrative and documentary films include Dolphin Boy, 39 Pounds of Love, Is That You, Je Tame, I Love You, Terminal, On the Map, and A Picture of His Life, to name a few. Um, and we at the Mirage JCC have had a long-standing friendship and admiration for Donnie. We were very fortunate to have screened the Orange County premiere of his film, Olsi, this past January, and also his um, film On the Map in 2017. So we're so happy to welcome him back virtually this time. <laughs> <laughs> and we've also um, purchased the license to screen his next latest film called A Picture of His Life, which he'll speak about as well um, for some time in the fall. So stay tuned and we'll let you know how it will turn out, um, what platform we'll do that in. Donnie's movies have been sold worldwide to companies such as Disney and HBO, um, and he's also a frequent speaker and juror at international film festivals, and is also a film studies lecturer at universities and colleges, both in Israel and in the United States. He's known for exploring the courage of human life through personal stories and connects extraordinary heroes of his films to a larger context and how they impact upon the world. Um, and Donnie lives in his family in Los Angeles. So welcome, Donnie. Um, I just wanted to say something about, um, hopefully none of you had a problem with the link, and I hope some of you had had the chance to screen Donnie's film, Dolphin Boy. Um, and this documentary film was, um, he directed along with his colleague and his friend, Jonathan Nier, who's also a friend of ours. And it tells the story of Murad, a teenage boy from an Arab village in the north of Israel, who suffered a violent and brutal attack and as a result, um, had severe post-traumatic syndrome and stopped speaking and lost total contact and touch with reality. Um, and just when all seemed lost, his psychiatrist, Dr. Ilan Kutz, uh, recommended that he go to a lot to the Dolphin Reef and try to be rehabilitated there. And so this film tells this amazing story. Um, and so we'll talk about it, but first I want to throw it over to Donnie and see, you know, what he has to say to our sure. crowd. So welcome, Donnie. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to be with you guys again. Uh, it was pleasure with so many films uh, so far. Uh, it feels like it was just yesterday that uh, I screened Olsi and, uh, and I met with your community and look at the world now, <laughs> yeah. everything is, has changed. Very strange. Uh, but we hope that very soon we will be able to also do in, this in person. And we can see it also as a bonus, you know, that we can revisit some of the work that uh, we joined forces. And uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, working with you guys on along the way. And uh, Dolphy Boy is something that is very close to my heart. I'm writing the movie now as a narrative. And it's... Um, it's a big joy because I'm exper experiencing the magic that happened in the documentary right now all over again. And what happened is that I met with uh, a family from the north side of Israel, Kal Kalanswa, north, north of Tel Aviv. I would have never met them if I was not a filmmaker that is looking for a good story. And Jonathan and I, my uh, partner for this film, we went to the south of Israel, to the, one of the most beautiful places, to see the magic of a kid that stopped communicating with, communicating with human beings, stopped trusting humans, and rebuilding his whole life again uh, with dolphins, but coming back as a dolphin boy. You know, somebody asked me now, I was just uh, on the call with uh, a guy named Joe Baby, he, le he lives in uh, Hawaii, and they have some similar facilities to uh, what exists in Eilat. And because I told him I'm writing this film now to the United States, but I want to keep the same magic 
in the narrative that I'm writing right now. And he asked me so many questions about, uh, about the movie and he was, he was fascinated by the fact that uh, a kid really changed his identity and came back as a dolphin. And then uh, he came up with that question that I've been asked so many times, who played Murad? Who played the father? <laughs> who played the doctor? And I've explained to him that they played themselves. This is a documentary. This is a real story. In real time. But because people could not believe that this, re this really happened. And we really structured, structured it and, and edited it and put music for it. As it is a feature film, uh, we've been asked that question. So since 39 Pounds of Love and Dolphin Boy and Picture of His Life, which I hope to come to you guys and show you that very soon, all see. Uh, I'm trying to put my narrative, my documentaries in the form of a narrative. And whoever saw uh, Is That You? That you can find on Amazon Prime. And or the Temel Avi Terminal, you can see that I'm doing the same thing on the opposite. When I do a feature film, I'm trying to make it feel very honest and real. So that's the fun thing about being an independent filmmaker and um, trying to touch people's life. I'm, I've been very fortunate uh, choosing the stories or, or have those incredible stories come to me. And, um, and Dolphy Boy was an unbelievable journey uh, that in many ways we didn't only uh, portray the healing process of Murad, but every other character in the film. If it's the father, if it's the psychiatrist, if it's the trainer, every character had to heal. And you know what, right now, writing the, the narrative reminds me that even the dolphins themselves sometimes needs to be healed. And, uh, and that's the magic of uh, Dolphin Boy. Another question that I've been asked, I don't know uh, if I will be asked now in this chat right now, is, is about the fact that Morad was an Arab kid. And, and, and people ask me, does this form of coexistence between Israelis and Arabs is something that you face in your normal day life? So the answer is yes. You know, we did not even discuss the fact that uh, uh, Morad is an Arab kid. Obviously, as a Jewish um, Israeli citizen, I would not naturally go to that village, you know, but our relationship with our cousins in Israel are, are like the one you've seen in the movie. And um, we go and we play soccer with them, with hummus with them, and there is no conflict between us besides what you hear in the news or besides when some people want to bring politics into life. And that's the nice thing about Dolphin Boy, that the dolphins really did not know that Morad is an Arab kid and we are Jewish. They did not care, neither did we. Sonia, I'm gonna take a couple of questions from the chat. Um, hang on. Somebody's asking, what prompted you to produce the movie about the subject? What was, how did you find out about him? And what was, what were the circumstances that led to you coming out? I've been asked a lot, how do I pick up my subject, my stories? And as an independent filmmaker, the first and foremost factor for me to, to choose the story is if I like the subject. So you can find out that I make a film about dolphins because I love dolphins. I have necklace of dolphins. Uh, I mean, I need them to heal myself. And the second thing is that I, uh, I know it's gonna be a long process. So it could be a movie about basketball because I'm a big basketball fan. 
So I'm making a story about a subject that I, I like and I enjoy. And the, and, and the next thing is that uh, I know it's a long process. So I have to find a narrative that will make sense. I have to find an anchor in the narrative that I will be able to lean into. Because many things can happen. But as soon as I knew that this is a story of an Arab kid that is uh, recovering from a post-trauma, I knew that this is a story that has a beginning, middle, and end. I did not know what will be the end of the movie, but I knew that there is a very strong narrative anchor to it. And I also knew that I have a very strong documentation from the doctor that I can lean on uh, when I'm showing and, I'm, and when, when I'm editing the movie. And, um, and I just wanted to choose the ending, the right ending for that film. So somebody says, actually, in keeping with what you said, they were commenting, was it a documentary with actors or um, was it actually <laughs> who you were fo following, which is what you, you had spoken about? Yeah. So I will, I will answer it very simply. There are no documentaries with actors. Uh, but what I do is when, when I choose my movies, I treat my, um, my characters like they are characters in a feature film. So for me, uh, the joy is to take a real story instruct it in three acts and put it in the beginning, middle, and end form, put the music in it and cut it, shoot it, edit it and score it music-wise like it is a feature film. Um, a couple of participants are asking, what is the status of Murad and his family today? How is Murad doing? Um, did he go on to get a job? And is, is he in another relationship? How is, how is he healing? Yeah, so I'm happy to say that Murad is back in his village. Uh, it was important for us to close the circle and bring him back home. So he came back home. He married a girl in his town. They have a little daughter named Lily. Same like my mom. <laughs> uh, I just spoke to his father a few days ago, and uh, I always like to update him about the adventures that I'm thinking of uh, doing with with this wonderful story. So um, the father um, always updates me about uh, Murad. Uh, Murad was also a teaching hydrotherapy. So it was a nice close of a circle and he worked as a lifeguard in a pool. So he was healed by the water and he's still close to the water. And of course they are in touch with the guys from the Dolphin Reef. And uh, that's also part of the wonderful thing. But in many ways, it is the story of the father. I became a father, Jonathan, became, my partner, became father from different wives, by the way. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we could understand and relate to what the father was going through. And you need to understand from where he's coming from, it is very unlikely, I think it's very unlikely to anyone to experience such a hard event that he, your son will be beaten cruelly and will disconnect himself from you and being without wanting to take any form of revenge. So that was the key moment in the movie that the father said, no, I'm not going to take a revenge. I'm going to choose the dolphin and I'm going to choose my son uh, over taking a revenge. We're just going to infuse the cycle of the violence. And he went against his uh, yeah. normal tradition, right. his instincts and stopped it. And... And in many ways, he needed to be healed from the anger and the, the frustration with the dolphins. And uh, I cannot talk highly enough about this father. And, uh, he was an amazing character. And, I, and he still is, yeah. Yeah, he seemed like a, a lovely, lovely person who loved his son and would do anything and sacrifice for yeah, it. Yeah. But yeah. you could see how he was dealing 
there's a, a scene where they're sitting around the, the bonfire and he decides to dance and, and to <laughs> be joyful. Yes. But you see he, his pain and he's crying, but he's, he's, he doesn't let the anger consume him. Yeah. And it's such a lesson so, for all of us. Yeah. Um, he was just a True. remarkable, remarkable character, even in the courthouse. So if you could talk a little bit about what, what the, the courthouse scene was like, because you guys were there with the cameras. They came after you. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. These guys were not fun to see, to watch. You need to understand, we did not focus in the movie and we still did not do not focus on the story um, with uh, the attackers or what happened in the trauma. We are giving away what happened and it's part of the mystery. And but we learned that the trauma is a trauma is a trauma. You know, it doesn't even matter where, what does it come from. But these guys were, uh, were bullied. They're, they were uh, harsh. And luckily we had a very big cameraman. So when they came after us, uh, you, have, you had to see this cameraman. We, we were behind him. <laughs> It was pretty tough, and uh, it was a it was one of those scenes that uh, you're you're happy that you are safe with camera and security, uh, because you can understand what what Murad had to had to go through. Um, one of our participants is ask is saying, as a mother, I felt such pain for Murad's mother and how he rejected her. And the rejection for so many years must have been very difficult for her. Um, yeah. just expand a little bit about that and, and if there's any information why you think that he rejected the mother or what was, what was that about? The scene that Morad is rejecting the mom and the mom is starting to have breast milk coming out of her was just again one of those things that if I would have written it in a normal movie, people would have said, ah, you know, you took the fiction too far. But the reason this happened is for his mom, she experienced Morad like he was born again. And that's when she had this thing. I, th I, I forgot the name of it. There is like a, a lactin that comes, yeah. lactation, yeah, that came out of her and suddenly she started to produce breast milk and that's after nine years she hasn't breastfed. On Morad's point of view, what happened is that Morad did not want to have anything to do with nothing that associates him with a village. So whatever associated him with a village, with event, even if it was his mom, he did not have, want to have anything to do with it. And, and, uh, and uh, he saw himself as a new kid that was born with a different, with a new identity of a dolphin boy. And he says, so, Born, he asks him. And I was born here. In a I was born here in a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Amazing. Um, you're being asked, what were the greatest challenges in making the film? Um, the underwater photography was great. Was that difficult to, to do? A, a, the underwater photography was the most fun thing to do because actually Murad was very much uh, collaborative in terms of going to the, to the water. Whenever we came to a lot and he said, oh, I don't want to talk now. Because you need to understand our biggest challenge was talking to somebody about his trauma when the last thing he wanted to talk is that event. He's trying to escape from the traumatic event and we are there to chase after his pain. So the way we solved it was the way he solved it, is just going underwater and uh, swimming with dolphins. That was the fun part about it. You're asking like, how do I pick up the stories? 
I mean, for us, we did not know if there will be a movie, if we will be able to sell it. We had no budget talking about challenges, nothing, nada. Uh, but we had dolphins and we had our love uh, to the story. And the idea was that uh, Morad always was willing to go underwater <laughs> and the challenges were outside of the water. And we had amazing stuff. The first thing Morad ever told me was if I could, I would have just stayed underwater. <laughs> That was the first thing uh, he ever said to me. Um, anyone visit the Dolphin Reef? Or do you have to be referred? Is it a medical facility that you have to be referred to? Or as visitors? I mean, they showed that there were people visiting, but... Is yeah. That oh, yeah. It, it, whoever came to a lot, uh, the Dolphin Reef is a must-see place. It's a, one of the most in, incredible places. And a lot of tourists are coming there. Where we shot, there are some um, side bays, closed bays that the dolphins can come and they treat sometimes autistic people and they treated Morad there usually very early in the morning. That's why you saw Magic Hour. Uh, it's funny, we shot the movie not with the best cameras, but always with the best lighting. So much so that we were nominated in one of the festivals, I think it was the Woodstock is the National Film Festival. We won an award and we were nominated for the best cinematographers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was just because of the scenery, the location, and the fact that we shot it in, uh, in wonderful lighting. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend it. You know, uh, you sit there and you watch the reef, you watch the dolphins, you're just and a few miles from Jordan and you're a few miles away from Sinai and you are even not too far from Saudi Arabia. And if you look at it on the map, it's, it's just an incredible place. In the end, what happened, um, we were being asked what actually happened to the boys who beat Murad up. Did they end up? Yeah, they did not get a very severe punishment, which we all hope that they will. Uh, but that was also one of the greatest things about the father. Uh, they got a year and a half. Some of them got three years. Uh, but the father knew that in order to stop the pain and stop the cycle of violence, there need to be a reconciliation. And there was one at some point. And they were released just so the cycle of violence will, will, will stop. And again, the, we can learn so much from that incredible person, the father, Assad. There was a point in the movie where um, they say that Murad has to testify against them, otherwise they can't be prosecuted. What did it take? I mean, uh, did he not want testify against them and, and then he had a change of heart? What was the process there? Yeah, yeah. So of course Murad did not want to testify because he did not want to talk about the event. He did not want to do anything about the event. He did not want to go back to the town. And um, he did testify. We, did, we could not be there with our cameras as much as we would have loved to. And, uh, and he faced them and he and he said, you know, what happened? And he showed that, you know, uh, they proved that there was a big damage to his life. And you need to understand in such a severe post-traumatic dissociation, you almost never completely heal from it. And so uh, luckily they, they were convicted. And did any of them ever apologize to him or it didn't? No, I don't think they ever had any communication with him and I don't think he even wanted anything to do with them. Okay, um, let's see if there's anyone. Um, Somebody is asking, was the family compensated for their contribution? Do you mean were they? Yeah, yeah, there was a financial compensation as well. Not big, again, the father compromised and he didn't ask for 
he could probably have gotten a lot of money and he didn't. Uh, but he said, let me get my, my son back. And, my, and, and the father was able to buy the farm again, which he had oh, to sell. Nice. Because you can see in the movie, he dedicated a year that he had to be with his father. With, with, he had to be with Murad, with his son. And uh, leave his work, leave his wife, leave his other kids. And it was a big price that he paid. Yeah, and he, he says at one point, I have nothing left to sell, so. <laughs> yeah, really? nothing left to sell. And you know what, we uh, Jewish in, people in Israel, we do not know or realize that an Arab father can be as devoted as a Jewish mom, and maybe even more. <laughs> and that's one of those little things that we also learn from this movie. Well, these are the kind of stories that we like to see, the, the friendships between the Arabs and Israelis and the, and the real connections that unfortunately we don't get to see as, as much. And these are the kind of stories that you do make films about, Donnie, and we appreciate that. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about your upcoming projects? Yes, absolutely. Yes. So one of those things that I'm doing is I'm, I'm turning my documentaries into narrative. I'm working on making on the map the narrative. I'm working these days on Dolphin Boy. Uh, you hear me? We hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, and and then, so um, you can go to my website, heyjudeproductions.com. You see Hey Jude. It's from the line of the Beatles. Take a sad song and make it better. Yeah. And you can come, support, donate. We are uh, doing all the events uh, during the COVID-19 for free. So uh, whoever wants to help and support us to maintain our capacity to still do good positive stories from Israel, uh, we're 501c3, it's all tax deductible. And um, you can go to heyjudeproductions.com and, uh, and donate and see our other projects. And uh, you can request a screener. And if anyone wants a DVD of any of our films, just let us know. And uh, one of our new film is the picture of his life. It's a story of a wildlife photographer shooting the polar bear underwater. By the way, uh, he has taken one of the most incredible, unique uh, creatures photographers of creatures of, on earth, and he's doing it face to face without protection. And yesterday he celebrated his 70th birthday. His name is Amos Nahum. And Jonathan and I, my partner for Dolphin Boy, and I uh, had the pleasure of uh, following him on his quest to shoot the polar bear underwater. That was the one picture that he missed. He tried it 10 years ago and he, uh, and he didn't succeed. And, uh, and now we tried again. I will not spoil you what happened, but you are welcome to uh, see the trailer on our website on hejudeproductions.com. So as our other films, and uh, we already are licensed <laughs> to show it with the, the community in Orange County. And uh, as I told Aliza, I can't wait to do it in person because there is nothing like doing it in person. We hope so, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. But you're yeah. welcome with us. Um, so I know. Chum, he, where does he, he lives in California, right? Yes, Sorry. yes, he lives in uh, Northern California. So what is the story of, he, what did he do when he was in Israel? Was he also a wildlife photographer? So uh, Amos was a soldier in 73 Ward. And speaking about uh, things that are similar between Dolphin Boy and, and Picture, of his life. Picture of His Life, is he also had a complicated relationship with his father. So it's a father-son relationship story. And he was suffering from PTSD from being a soldier in the Yom Kippur War in the 1973 um, terrible war that Israel had. And he escaped to the United States and he became a 
wildlife photographer. He replaced the gun as an Israeli soldier with a camera. So instead of killing with uh, the lenses, he just built up beauty and life. And um, he became one of the great, the world's greatest uh, wildlife photographers. Okay. Yeah. And, and our journey was going to the ultimate picture that he wanted to take, a polar bear underwater. So I will you tell and, you that you there were 12 people around? walking on the moon, only wow. four uh, have a uh, swim face to face, not with the mount or anything, face to face with the polar bear. So, wow, uh, and you and you there was no, no, no one, no one, none, uh, a steel photographer has ever done it. That's incredible. And where were you when he was doing that? <laughs> I was safe on the boat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm, that's Luckily, what I'm yeah, you know? yeah. Luckily. Not that crazy. But if, when you will see the film, you'll understand how far we had to go to. Uh, the furthest we have ever went uh, to the, the, the wilderness. Uh, you had to take, we had to take six connection flights. And then after we took six connection flights, we had to take another private plane to the wilderness, to the bear land. Where, where was that? Where that was in the Can Canadian Arctic. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, could you also <laughs> talk to us a little bit about on the map and then Olsi um, and- Yeah. As I said, you know, I'm choosing movies that I like, subjects that I love. In 1977 and uh, on the map story, uh, they were our childhood heroes, you know, uh, they were, I mean, everybody's talking about The Last Dance. And I would love to share with you an interview I've done with the creators of The Last Dance, which, by the way, one of them is my producer partner for uh, On the Map and Olsi, John Weinbach. So uh, for me, uh, you know, uh, the Michael Jordan of Israel was Mickey Berkovich. So for us, uh, these guys were our childhood heroes. Uh, so when I was approached first by the Israeli TV asking me if I can make a story about these unbelievable heroes from 1977 that uh, went to play against the Russians during the Cold War. You need to understand, these days the Russians were the giants. These players beat the United States in Munich in one day golden medal and they did not want to play against israel because they did not recognize israel rights to exist so when they go and play that game by itself was the victory and then uh, when israel is winning that became our miracle like you have the miracle on ice here in the states that became became our miracle on the hardwood but it became more than that because when the, when tal brody said we are on the map and he really defined uh, what everyone felt in the country. It felt that this was not only a victory on, in sport, but that really changed uh, the country forever. And that's how people feel about that event until today. And then the outgrowth of that on the map was also where you kind of, yeah. you dived into the story of Olsi Perry. And that yes, was because Olsi was always the story I wanted to tell from many years ago. He's an African-American, came to Israel, changed the country, joined the 77 team, and then he fell in love with a Jewish girl, fell in love with the country. The country fell in love with him. And he really, not only he changed a... a the country, but you could have seen how Israel treated African Americans. And that's why he changed his name and he became Jewish and he lives in Israel until today, but also when he had big hardships and when he had to uh, 
um, uh, you know, uh, he had the, the challenges of coping with drugs. And uh, first it was medical drugs, but then he, he started to be addicted to, to drugs. And the country never uh, left him and always, he was always um, part of the country and the country saved him twice. It was an incredible story, really, really incredible story. So if any of you have any more questions, please put it in the chat um, so I can read it out to Donnie. Yeah, and if anyone wants to see one of the films, please reach out to us. We're always happy and uh, when he, anyone who will, who will support, we'll, we'll be happy to share with them a DVD, a link for any of our films. And uh, if you want to sign basketball by Tal Brody and Olsi Perry, <laughs> we're also happy to, uh, <laughs> to share so, with so, you. So yeah. some of you may not know when we screened, when we had the OC premiere in January, Olsi was supposed to come along with Donnie and um, unfortunately he was ill. So one of our guests is asking, is Olsi feeling better? Because we were- so Olsi is feeling better. And you know what, uh, Aliza and I were talking before we went uh, live here and we thought that possibly that Olsi was maybe one of the first corona cases. Um, guys, because we really did not know what happened to him, but he went to the hospital. He had problems with his breath, uh, with his lungs, and he had pneumonia. He was infected. Uh, it was really serious. And he was devastated uh, because he really wanted to be with you guys in, uh, in Orange County. So I will tell you this, that as soon as we can, I would love to, here's an offer live. I would love to have another screening for Olsi and we'll put <laughs> Olsi uh, live from Israel with you guys. We're, we're going to hold you to that, Donnie. So yes, everyone, yes, yes. Everyone heard we'll you. We'll, everyone we'll heard you it. and I'm recording you, so you can't get out. Yes, <laughs> yep. Pledge. Going back to some questions. Oh. Is there a website for the um, a lot dolphin reef? Somebody's asking. Do you know? Yes, yes. I do not remember it by heart, but if you just write dolphin reef a lot, you'll you find it. Incredible place. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Yeah. If you and go then, and you visit Israel, uh, when you will visit Israel? I know there are no flights now, or very limited flights. When you will come back and visit Israel? please do go to uh, the Dolphin Reef in Elat because it's a magical place. And, uh, and right now when I research for my fiction film, I find that there are some places like that in the Bahamas. There are some places like that in uh, Hawaii. There is one in, in uh, uh, Cancun in Mexico, but very few. And until I'll see it in my own eye, I will tell you that I, have never, I haven't yet found an incredible place like the Dolphin Reef. People are asking, does Israeli medical insurance cover the expense of that type of therapy in a lot? And certainly, how did Murad's family deal with that? I mean, did they have health insurance? It must have been quite a expensive. Yeah, one. it's such a unique therapy that nobody covers. I think they should. And Health insurance is a big issue also in Israel, not only in the United States, and, but it's so unique that not a lot of people recognize it. And you have to understand, even in the movie, what we show, it was an experiment. You know, you did not know that it will succeed the way it did. So I will tell you that the guys in the Dolphin Reef did not charge. Murad started working there and the psychiatrist Ilan Kutz, they, he helped them for free. And, and it was really a movie about kindness. Kindness of the father, kindness of the Dolphin Reef, kindness of Dr. Ilan Kutz, a psychiatrist. And if I may say, kindness of the dolphins as well. Absolutely. If you had to think about casting this film, do you have anyone in mind who you'd like to see playing those parts? Ideas, please, in your chat room. Please give me ideas. <laughs> Any ideas, I'm looking people? For help. I'm, I, I, it's a startup. Whoever want to join, whoever want to be part of the movie, whoever want, has idea for casting, I will tell I you have we're approaching now. Uh, 
Dave Chappelle, and Michael Douglas for a second, but we, we're, we're approaching, we're hitting big, but definitely please uh, throw it out there. Well, if you want some no names, I have a pair of twin, a boy and a girl set of twins who like act <laughs> performing, so. <laughs> I, I will tell you that we will have no problems with no names. Uh, the way it works in the business is that you do need to need have a name, of course. Uh, a name in order to, uh, to secure uh, the funding. And if we will do it totally independent, we may be able to do it with no names. I personally, on a creative aspect of it, I would have loved it. So it is possible that we will do it this way. Someone is asking, how long did it take you to film Dolphin Boy? Four years. It's four years of documentation, beginning to end. We did not know it will take that long. And we had different scenarios. We thought the movie will end maybe with a relationship with the, uh, the girl, uh, the Jewish girl in, in Morad. That was a big story. But when after two years they separated, we understood that the story will be about Murad coming back home or not. Mm -hmm. So uh, it took him four years until he was able to face the trauma, face who he was and come back home. You need a lot of patience <laughs> to be a filmmaker and to, uh, to be a documentary filmmaker. You know, it's, it's a lot of patience. Luckily now that I'm writing the story, I already have the beginning, middle, end, and it will not take so long mm -hmm. until we'll go into production. Do you know if Murad had any problem with his family or once they found out about his relationship with the Israeli girl, if it was an issue for them and also if it was an issue for her, I had read somewhere that she was kind of hiding the relationship from her family. So could you speak yeah. about that? Yes, and, and we had a longer sequence that it was an issue for her. Uh, in order not to make too much of a big deal just for her sake, we did not implement it, even though she mentioned this in the movie. And she says, I'm Jewish and he is an Arab. But as she says, love is love. And the way the dolphins did not see the religion, they did not know, uh, they formed their relationship based on the fact that she was as much of a dolphin girl as he was a dolphin boy. And that was the magical thing. The father did not make any issue whatsoever about the fact that she was Jewish. And I will say that as much as I mentioned the trainers, the psychiatrists, the dolphins, the father, of course, as a part of the healing process of Murad, uh, Shani, his girlfriend, was also part of this healing process. And I think at some point when Murad was able to acknowledge where he came from, at that point, also, their relationship was over because in some ways, her role uh, was over as well. Um, someone is asking, did you know of Dr. Kutz before and did you find out the story and is he the one who told you about this incredible story? I think you had explained before how. So the way I found out about the story is that after I've done 39 Pounds of Love, it was my first uh, international film. It was on HBO. Uh, you mentioned that it won Israeli Academy Award and it was shortlisted here for the Oscars. Right. Uh, I kind of looked for a dolphin story and I met with Jonathan. Jonathan was part of the dolphin reef team. And they heard about the story because Morad came and they were shooting Morad. So when we heard about the story from the Dolphin Reef team and we had seen the documentation that they have shot, uh, we met with the psychiatrist, the Dr. Kutz, and he showed us that he shot Murad from the day he came, uh, a few days after the event. Oh. That was like a documentary gold. So we had a longer documentation, much longer of what we even anticipated and that's how uh, 
his role uh, of this of the the doctor as a storyteller and uh, somebody who documented uh, uh, for, for research reasons his role became very important as uh, as, as a storyteller and also as somebody who gave us always the information that we really needed to where and and in uh, where and when and how to approach Morad. I will tell you that when we launched the film in the festival in Jerusalem in Israel, magically it was a day after the attackers went to jail. And that helped Murad uh, joining us. That helped Murad because it was very tough for Murad to see the movie. But the fact that they were sentenced a day before our premiere, it really helped us. And Murad came with his father, with the psychiatrist. He got an amazing standing ovation. And from a victim, he became a hero. And that's another nice thing that you can do uh, with the film. It's an amazing story, and all your stories are amazing. And I'm just going to ask one more time if anyone has any last questions for Donnie. Um, if you have any further questions, you can always contact me, Aliza S. at jccoc.org. And um, I'm happy to get back with you. I don't see any more questions here. Thank you everyone for joining us this evening. We hope that you enjoyed yourselves. If you haven't seen the movie, you, you have the link in the chat, please. And Donnie is incredible. And we hope to continue showing your stuff for as long as you keep producing it. Stay safe, stay healthy. Laila Tov, be well. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you so much, guys. Hope to see you, you soon. Hope you'll open the beach in Orange County again <laughs> <laughs> and open the wonderful Jewish Film Festival. I can't wait. I'm doing this film for you guys. Please be in touch, reach out, come with ideas, come with thoughts. Uh, you guys are the reason why we're working hard to make those stories. So thank you again. Aliza and uh, for Thank you everyone for coming, in the community and I'm thrilled and I'm honored. Thanks. We're so happy to have you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. <laughs>